Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today I thought I'd spend a little time uh, reflecting on how just uh, how much the world has really changed. You know, that open source and Linux has changed, but also just how the world has become a place that I hardly recognize from not too long ago, that really things are going so well for uh, open source and Linux that uh, the world has almost become this really bizarre place. I think that uh, Linus Torvald said it best uh, in Tokyo I th just a, a month or two ago uh, that he used to always joke about world domination. It was kind of like the standing joke. Yeah, yeah, we're going to dominate the world. Linux is going to take over. He doesn't tell that joke anymore. <laughs> it's, it's a little too cocky. But things have really, really changed. It's crazy. Everything's backwards. Um, you know, some of the examples of uh, how my world has gone completely upside down. Windows sales are dropping. It's unbelievable. For the first time, wow, not a, not a lot of Microsoft guys in the crowd today, I can see. Uh, but it, you know, it, who would have thought? You know, we'd see a day where we'd see a decline in the mighty uh, Windows platform. Uh, another thing around Microsoft, it's no longer the largest technology company in the world. In fact, Apple's the largest technology company in the world, and they're the largest one by a long shot. But even IBM this summer, uh, their market cap actually rose above uh, Microsoft's for the first time in, in quite some time. And so, you know, that really says how different and kind of crazy this new world is. Even crazier, look at, look at just the stock market. Red Hat, you know, a pure open source company, has outperformed Microsoft for a decade. 400% increase in the stock price of Red Hat versus, you know, a, a, a stock in Microsoft that is virtually flat. I mean, you know, again, you know, who would have thought we'd see a day where open source isn't just doing well, where companies like Red Hat aren't just doing well, but they're outperforming their competitors by 400% in terms of the investment that you can achieve there. I mean, it's, it's so crazy to think about just how important Linux and open source has become for the world. It now runs the majority of the world's equity trading systems. So literally, your money is in the hands of Linux and open source. You can't, you can't buy Microsoft stock without going through a Linux system first. Uh, it, it, you know, in a really short period of time, you know, if you look at it from a historical perspective, in you know, just a really short period of time, Linux has gone from almost no share in the supercomputing and high-performance computing market to absolutely dominating it. Uh, this is incredibly uh, impressive. Not only has the share gone up significantly, but uh, you know, if you look just at the power of these high-performance computing systems today, I didn't bring the chart to show you, but not only has there been a rise in Linux share, but as that share has risen, the power of those systems has risen exponentially in an even greater rate than the, the adoption of Linux. So Linux is not only growing in share, but it's powering this massive, massive increase in high-performance computing power because it's so agile, because it can be adapted in so many different architectures and different configurations. It's just incredible to think of the power it's supplying. Linux, Linux is now dominating in embedded computing. Linux is dominating in mobile. It's crazy to think about. I mean, Android, I, what, are the, what is the latest statistic? 550,000 activations a day. That is just stunning to think about. That is the, that, that's so crazy and backwards for me because I think for like 10 years we predicted the year of the Linux desktop. <laughs> and, and now Android, which is pretty much a desktop, I mean, come on, uh, is activating 550,000 of these a day? That is crazy. And I think that Linux is the only platform that has really made these leaps from high performance computing to embedded systems to mobile. I mean, it's really impressive to think about how open source and Linux can adapt in this way. And I think that's one of the big reasons for its success is because these self-forming communities that come around Linux and open source are able to really adapt to unpredicted changes in the marketplace. What, what's even more interesting about this is not only is open source and Linux able to adapt to change, but it's it creates this incredible cross-pollination effect that we maybe didn't expect, where 
when the guys working on Android or uh, any of the many, many, you know, what the Kindle, what you name it, are worried about longer battery life, and they submit a patch to any of the many subsystems that make up Linux, that actually saves a ton of money for the high-performance computing guys whose number one cost isn't the hardware or the software, it's the power and the cooling, right? So you have this incredible cross-pollination that's happening as a result of this new way of producing software, which I guess ain't so new anymore, but you know, has been a, re a real revolution in the IT industry. Heck, we're even in cars. That's unbelievable to me. I never thought I'd see the day where we'd see, you know, Toyota join the Linux Foundation, where we'd see all these companies m using Linux to create systems inside of cars. And in fact, it's so crazy that I really felt compelled to just go out and buy myself a brand new Lexus. <laughs> I highly advise it. Yet I, I recommend this car. It's a great. It's a hybrid, so it's green. So I really recommend uh, the the Lexus RX 450h. Toyota just joined the Linux Foundation. Did I mention that part? <laughs> Anyways, I mean, it's, it's just, it, it, it's crazy to think of this world where, it, you know, Linux is running train systems in Japan. It discovered oil in Brazil. It runs all these stock exchanges. It runs air traffic control systems, nuclear submarines. It runs the CERN super collider. I mean, it's just, you know, if you think about it, nuclear submarines, uh, the stock exchange, and uh, air traffic control. Your life, death, and money are all in the hands of open source and Linux. That's, uh, did we ever think we'd see the day where that happened? But this is the craziest thing. Microsoft is being nice. Uh, it's, uh, it, my world's all crazy backwards these days. In fact, they're being so nice they, on the 20th anniversary of Linux, which is this uh, summer, the, the birthday, birth of Linux, uh, they sent us a little birthday video, the folks from Microsoft. I thought I would share that with all of you guys today, uh, the, the nice video they sent over. When we got this, we were kind of like, okay, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, you know, I love a couple of parts of this video are, are really my favorite. Uh, you know, they're like, what happened? You know, why, why couldn't we get along? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let me think about that. We started throwing the rocks. That's... Uh, but again, it's funny, like, what happened? They gave these, these great examples. The one, my favorite example uh, is this one. Our ideas, Linux ideas, seem childish to Microsoft, and, and this graphic is great. I mean, really childish ideas like the, um, the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Which wasn't even our idea, it was Al Gore's idea. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> it's, I get it was childish. Um, and then, you know, the, we keep bickering even today, you know, it's like, hmm, why is, what do you think that is, the lawsuits? Do you think that could be any to? I mean, maybe it's because you, uh, Microsoft just stole my best friend. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't you, it's me, okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is nice to see that we can have friendly competition with Microsoft, we'd love to see uh, even more friendliness go on there, and uh, as a thank you for the video that we got from Microsoft, and for being good sports, if there's any Microsofties in the audience, I see one right there, uh, 
we want to invite you guys up to our 20th anniversary party in Vancouver. It's just two hours drive from, C from Seattle, uh, from Redmond. And uh, it's on August 17th. We're having a black tie event. So put on your tuxedos, Microsoft, and come celebrate Tux on August 17th. We'd love to have you in Vancouver. So thanks for the video, and thanks for being good sports. Um, thank you. I just want to show you guys a video that shows how far Linux has come. Microsoft our story stole our idea on this too ago. with the writing. Boris Yeltsin was sworn into office. Jay Leno replaced Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. And cell phones were really, really big. It was August of 1991, and a 20-year-old computer science student named Linus Torvalds sat down at his computer in Helsinki to post what is now one of the most famous entries in computing history. Hello, everybody out there. I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby. Won't be anything big and professional like GNU. It probably will never support anything other than AT hard disks, as that's all I have. Well, word of Linux open source project quickly spread around the globe, and developers from all over contributed their code. Linus named his OS kernel Linux and chose a penguin as its mascot after a little incident at the zoo. He soon made a very important decision that would shape Linux's future just as much as the technology. He chose the GPL license created by a visionary named Richard Stallman. The Linux kernel, along with the GPL license and other GNU components, revolutionized the computing industry with a few very simple yet very important freedoms. The freedom to use the software for any purpose the freedom to change the software to suit your needs, the freedom to share the software with your friends and neighbors, and the freedom to share the changes you make. These radical ideas fueled its spread around the world, and somewhat paradoxically, its rise from a hobbyist experiment to the foundation of a large and thriving commercial ecosystem. Companies built businesses around Linux. <laughs> In 1999, Red Hat's stock crippled as it became the first Linux company to go public. That same year, IBM spent a billion dollars to improve and advertise Linux. Does he have a name? His name is Linux. Soon, Linux was knocking out industry heavyweights and fueling the rise of the Internet with its free software. In short, Linux revolutionized computing. But whenever something is this disruptive, there's bound to be competitive crossfire. But Linux not only survived, it thrived. Today, the kernel development community numbers in the thousands, with hundreds of companies collaborating on Linux development. Every three months, another version of Linux is released. So, where is Linux today? Running in 75% of stock exchanges worldwide, and powering the servers that deliver Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, eBay, and Google. You use Linux literally every time you surf the internet. It's in your phone, in your TV, running 95% of supercomputers, and in many of the devices you use every day. Linux is everywhere. And the Helsinki-based programmer who started it all? He orchestrates this worldwide army of developers from his home office in Portland, Oregon, as a fellow at the Linux Foundation. As we celebrate 20 years of Linux, we can all see ourselves in its story. Thank you for being a part of its first 20 years. That's amazing to think of just how far we've come. It's really amazing. <laughs> What's even better is we're succeeding despite terrible marketing. You know, I lecture Linus on this all the time. Just last week, the guy comes out with the 3.0 kernel. I'm like, Linus, newsflash. Windows came out with this over 20 years ago. They're on like Windows 7, you know? 20 years ago, they had these incredible innovations, you know? Like, come on. They're continuing to innovate. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> what do you think people use these computers for? But we're really still doing incredibly well. And so I thought, you know, like the theme of this event is so now that we've changed the world, now that there's been this degree of success, where do we go from here? And I think it's worth looking at how we use language and describe things and what motivates all of us who are a part of this big community. 
about how we're going to use language and, and think and, and sort of have ideas for this next 20 years. So let's look at two of the biggest leaders in technology in the last couple of decades and how, what kind of language they use. I don't use uh, these handheld computers because they have non-free software in them. <clears throat> well, some of you might be wondering why I have aluminum foil around my badge. But I've been fighting for freedom of the free software movement. Freedom for computer user. Freedom, freedom, the freedom, it free software. We will respect your freedoms. Freedom, freedoms. Freedom, the freedom, freedom, the freedom, freedom, to freedom, 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 freedom. But these freedoms should not be strange to you. Freedom, 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 freedom. The free software movement, freedom in using our computers. We're all free. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Freedom, freedoms, freedom, freedom, freedoms, 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 free software, freedoms, free software, freedoms, freedoms, freedoms can live in freedom and be a good neighbor. I love that. I love that. I mean, clearly a revolutionary and an incredible intellect. Let's look at another person who everyone looks to as one of the greatest leaders in tech today and what kind of language they use. We want to kick off 2010 by introducing a truly magical, wonderful, pretty amazing, better, bigger, far better, amazing, great, amazing, bigger, incredible, larger, the best, great, far better, awesome, the best, magical, and revolutionary product today. And we call it the iPad. And what this device does is extraordinary. Simple, it's phenomenal, simple, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal, unbelievably great. Way better than a laptop. Awesome, far better. Gorgeous, so easily. Simple, great, excited, wonderful. Cool, great. This goes on simple. for a long great, time. Very nice, great, gorgeous, <laughs> incredible, awesome. Super high quality. All right, well, I'll, I'm going to cut off Steve Jobs here with that. And the point I'm making is, I don't think these ideas are mutually exclusive. You gotta be free, and you have to be amazing. And I don't want you to think that this is a lecture for me to say, you know, you open source guys, your UIs suck, and you need better usability. We're beyond that. Open source is incredibly usable. It powers unbelievably easy to use devices. They're amazing, they're better, they're awesome. We're already there, but that is the baseline. That's the baseline for a successful project. That's the baseline for a successful product. You know, that, you know people, if, if you're amazing and incredible, you're going to be successful in all likelihood. But the, the, that's not the point I want to make. The point I want to remind everyone on this 20th anniversary of Linux and on, uh, an, at an event like OSCON is that the freedom part still matters. And it matters a whole heck of a lot. Richard Stallman was right. Freedom is important. It is really important. It's freedom for individuals. It's freedoms for corporations. It's you know, freedom for them to provide their own services, to create their own music stores, to create their own movie downloads, whatever they want to do. I mean, ask yourself, could Google be the company today that they are if they had built the Google Search product using Microsoft.NET products? I don't think they would, right? It was the freedom that Linux provided that allowed them to do what they're doing. And while we might dicker over the tenets of this, com this, this concept, it remains incredibly important. I think we've come a long way in making the world not only a more competitive place for technology vendors to create software more rapidly by sharing innovation, but from a social perspective, mankind is better off now that we're sharing all this stuff. Heck, even Apple uses a lot of open source in their products. If you have an iPhone on you, and I know a lot of you guys do, I see Apple logos like everywhere here. Uh, go into the About General Legal section and you'll see names in there like Eric Raymond and the Free Software Foundation. And you know, they couldn't have created this product without this free software, or without this open source and free software. And so that's what I want to remind everyone, is that while we've come so far, while amazing things are being created and while we've changed the world, it's important to remember that the idea that got many of us involved in this, 
That, in fact, enabled some of us to actually start participating because all we needed was a connection to the Internet and access to the source code remains as important as ever. And so as we go to the next 20 years, as we've already changed the world and we're going to change it more, always remember the importance of that concept. Thank you very much. <laughs>